Okay, so we're going to talk about rational functions in their graphs. So if we're looking to find um, the rational functions and their graphs, let's go look at a couple of basic examples and then we'll, we'll come back to our handout. So we want to find the domain of a rational function. And we want to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So let's look at example one. We're looking at f of x is equal to x plus 2 over x plus 5. So if you recall that we've learned previously that the domain has to do with if there is a denominator or if there's a square root or an even root. Well, we don't have any roots, but we have a denominator. So to find our denominator, we're going to set that equal to 0. So for the domain, we're going to take our x plus 5 is equal to 0. And by moving that over by subtraction, we'll get x equal to negative 5. So the domain, that remember, if you recall, that means if we plug that in, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So that means that x can be anything but that negative 5. So we need to figure out what that's going to be. So negative 5, it can be anything but that, so it'll be from negative infinity to negative 5 union with 5, oh, negative 5 to infinity. So this would be your domain. Now, let's look at our x-intercept. Remember, you set y equal to 0. So f of x, same thing as y, so 0 equals x plus 2 divided by x plus 5. We want to clear out the denominator, so we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 5. Well, anything times 0 is still 0 equal to x plus 2. Move the 2 over, and we have negative 2 is equal to x, or x equals negative 2. Remember, this is a point, so it'll be negative 2, comma, 0. So that would be our x-intercept. All right, let's go find our y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So with that, we will have y is equal to 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 5. Well, that'll equal two-fifths. So it'll be zero comma two-fifths. And those are the three parts we're looking for. All right, let's do another one similar to it. So let's look at example two. So g of x is equal to x over x squared minus nine. So for our domain, we will take our x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now you can move that over and find that x um, and do the square root property, or you can do the difference of squares. Either one works. You'll still get to the same answers. I'm going to go ahead and factor this with the difference of squares. So x minus 3 times x plus 3 equals 0, and then set each part equal to 0. So x will equal 3, and x will equal negative 3. Again, set up our number line with our infinities and our numbers. It'll be everything but those two numbers. So negative infinity to negative 3, union with negative 3 to 3, union with 3 to infinity. So if you have one number, you end up with two parts in your domain. If you have two numbers, you're going to end up with three parts into your domain. So be aware of that. All right, the x-intercept. So the x-intercept, we again set y equal to 0. So 0 equals x over x squared minus 9. We will multiply both sides 
by our x squared minus 9. So we end up with 0 is equal to x. So our intercept is 0, 0. All right, let's look at the y-intercept. Remember, x equals 0 for that. So we have y is equal to 0 divided by 0 squared minus 9, which is 0 divided by negative 9. You can divide 0 by any number. You still get 0. I can have no cookies, and I can divide it by negative 9 people. They're still going to get no cookies because I don't have any cookies. So this also will be 0, 0. All right, let's look at another one. So we're looking at example 3. h of x is equal to x plus 3 over x squared plus 9. So we're finding the same exact things. We're looking for the domain. That's where we set our denominator equal to 0. Well, this one won't factor, so let's go with the square root property. So I'll move the 9 over and get x squared equal to negative 9. Well, I start to see a problem already because a squared number cannot equal a negative, but let's keep solving just to make sure. So x would be equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Well, in order to do that, I've got to take out the square root of negative 1, which will get me an i, square root of 9. So x equals plus or minus 3i. Well, that tells me it's an imaginary. So that means nothing I plug in here will get me to 0. So let's talk about that. If I pick, let's say, 3, because I want to get 9 to be 0, and the only way to get 9 to be 0, I can subtract out 9. Well, if I pick 3, 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 9 is 18. If I pick negative 3, well, when I square negative 3, I still get positive 9. 9 plus 9 is 18 still, so I'm still not at 0. Well, let's try 0. Well, 0 squared plus 9 is still 9. 1 would be 1 squared plus 9 is 10. So the lowest I can really get to is 9. So this can never get you to 0. That means there's no numbers out there that are going to cause an issue for your domain. So that means it's going to be all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. Because, because of the plus sign versus the minus sign, it's a completely different answer. So, no issues there. So let's go look at the x-intercept. y is equal to 0. So y is equal to, oops, sorry, uh, x plus 3 over x squared plus 9. So now we'll set that to 0. So 0 is equal to x plus 3 over x squared plus 9. So we'll multiply again both sides by our x squared plus 9. So we still end up with 0 is equal to x plus 3. As we subtract the 3 over, we'll get negative 3 is equal to x, or x equals negative 3. Either way you want to write it, it doesn't matter to me. And that will get you the point of 0. It will be the point of negative 3, 0, because it's the x-intercept and y was set equal to 0. All right, let's look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where x equals 0, so y equals 0 plus 3 over 0 squared plus 9. Well, 0 is 0, no matter if it's squared or not. So that'll get you 3 on the top over 9. You need to reduce, so that'll be 1 third. So our y-intercept will be 0 comma 1 third. And those would be your answers. All right, so let's go look at some basic graphs. So some of the basic rational graphs, rational graphs, 
The most basic one is f of x is equal to 1 over x, because it's the simplest fraction. So what we're finding here is that when we're looking at this, as x approaches 0 from the left side of the graph, so it's coming from the left, and it comes this way, notice that the numbers are getting smaller as x gets smaller. Notice that the y value actually gets really, really big. So as we get closer to 0, from negative 1 to negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.1, and so forth, it's getting from negative 1 to negative 2 to negative 10 to negative 100 to negative 1,000. It is growing hugely. It's going to go really, really fast. Now, as we approach it from the right, the same kind of thing is happening. When we're coming in from the right, as we pick values of x that get closer to 0, it's again growing really, really fast. As the x increases without bound is one way that they say it. As we look at it from this part here, it's going this way and it's going that way. When we put the graph together, it looks like this. This is the graph of 1 over x. So um, there's some notation that goes with that. If they say to as x approaches a with a plus sign, that is it's approaching from the right, a with a negative sign, it's approaching A from the left. If it's approaching infinity, that means it increases without bound, or negative infinity, that means it approaches negative infinity and X decreases without bound. So that's just some stuff. We won't use this notation a whole lot in our class, but that way you have kind of a bigger idea. What we're going to be looking at is the asymptotes. So the asymptote, the graph only gradually approaches or never reaches a certain point. These can be vertical, horizontal, or slant. So notice they're getting really close on this graph here, but they're never going to hit the zero. They're approaching it, but they'll never actually reach it. It'll just keep getting closer and closer and closer without actually touching it. So a vertical asymptote is the line of x equals a of a graph of a function where that function increases or decreases without bound as x approaches the a. So we have a vertical asymptote and it's getting really, really, really close to it. You can get it from either side, but it's never actually going to touch the asymptote. A graph may never cross a vertical asymptote. To find them, we're going to set the denominator equal to zero, which was the same thing we did for our domains. So when you're finding your domain, you're actually finding your vertical asymptotes as well. Now, a function can have no vertical asymptotes, it could have one vertical asymptote, or it can have several. So let's go look at um, our vertical asymptotes, and then we'll go find out about horizontals. So let's look at example four. And we're going to find vertical asymptotes. So the first one is f of x is equal to x over x minus 3. Well, to find it, we're going to take x minus 3 equal to 0 and get x equals to 3. So this means that the line, because it's a line, x equals 3, is our vertical asymptote. So x equals 3 is the vertical asymptote. And I'm going to write VA for, um, because those are big words to write a lot. All right, let's look at part B. If I give you g of x is equal to x plus 2 over x squared minus 9, again, we're looking at x squared minus 9 equals 0. And we can factor this, or we can use the square root property. I'm going to go ahead and factor it with the difference of squares and set each part equal to zero. So, oops, I forgot the zero. X will equal negative three and X equals three. These are the vertical asymptotes. So, they are lines, just remember that. They're not points. All right, let's look at C. So, H of X is equal to X minus one over X squared plus one. So x squared plus 1 equals 0, so x squared equals negative 1, 
Taking the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of negative 1 is, again, i. So that means there's no vertical asymptote. So once you're taking that square root of a negative, it's not going to happen. So here we had one vertical asymptote, here we had two, and here we had none. So you can have many options as far as the vertical asymptotes go. All right, let's look at part D. So if we look at f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, I notice on this problem that there's a little bit of something extra going on here. Because x squared minus 4 is the difference of squares, so if I factor this out, I actually get x plus 2 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2. Well, these two will actually uh, cancel out, and I end up with x plus 2. So that means that this is not a vertical asymptote at all, but it is something else. So if we take our x minus 2 equal to 0, we get x equal to 2. It's not an asymptote. This is a hole in the graph. So it won't be an asymptote. It'll actually be a hole. So if we look at the graph of this problem, when we look at that, where we're looking at x equal to 2, it actually just has a hole. But the graph will continue up to that point and jump over that hole and continue on. But it's not going to be an asymptote. It'll just be a hole because it cancels with the um, numerator. All right, so let's go look at um, part seven. Oh, sorry, sorry, part E. I moved the page. All right, part E. If we look at f of x is equal to x plus 3 over x squared minus 9, we have the same situation here where we have the denominator, and the denominator is, um, has our changes in it as far as the graph goes. Before, we had it up here. Here we've got the difference of squares again. So x plus 3, x minus 3. So again, the x plus 3s will cancel, and we'll end up with 1 over x minus 3. Well, this is going to be a vertical asymptote. So x equals 3, that will be a vertical asymptote. But that x plus 3 that cancels is going to be x equals negative 3. This will be a hole in the graph. So if we come over here and look at our graph again of our problem, this is what the graph will look like. Here's the hole at x equals negative 3, and the vertical asymptote will still go through at x equals 3. So you can have a hole and a vertical asymptote. I usually do not ask about holes on the exams, but you will probably see them happen in your homework. It's still a very good concept for you to know. I just can't ask everything on the exam. All right, so now let's go look at horizontal asymptotes. So a horizontal asymptote, the line y equals b of the graph of a function is of f is f of x approaches b as it increases or decreases without bound. Now a graph can cross a horizontal asymptote. Usually if they do, it's around the origin, but they can cross them. They can't cross the vertical, but they can cross the horizontal. But usually they'll cross at the origin. So to find a horizontal asymptote, there's different ways you can find them. You can use the whole n and m part if you know that. But I'm going to show you a simpler one. We're just going to look at the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. So if we're looking at the graphs, this is what a horizontal asymptote will look like. So here we've got a 
where it's going to go up to it, but not cross. Here it's not going to cross. Here it's crossing over here. So it can cross at any place, but usually we're going to find that it crosses at the, um, the origin in the graphs that we do. But it can cross anywhere on the graph. All right, so finding it in fraction form with the coefficient and term in their re um, respective places, we're going to use the term with the highest degree in either the numerator or the denominator. If the degree in the denominator is higher, then we'll place the term in the denominator and then zero fill, the, the leading coefficient is what we're going to put in there, fill the numerator with the matching degree of the denominator and cancel what we can. All right, so here's an example. So if it's both x squared, we'll fill in what we have, and in this case, our denominator would be equal to zero. If, again, it's at an x, we're looking at an x squared equation, we match them. And if this one has a four over two, then it's two. Here, if we have a four on the top and end up with a zero on the bottom, then it's gonna be undefined and we won't have one. So let's actually go do some problems with this so it becomes more clear to you. All right, example five. We are finding the horizontal asymptote. So if we look at f of x is equal to 4x over 2x squared plus 1. So we're going to force the degrees of our equation or our function to match so our highest degree is x squared. So this will be will y equals, this is, uh, oopsie, over x, uh, equals x squared over x squared. So I'm forcing them to match. So how many x squareds do I have on the top? Well, I don't have any. How many do I have on the bottom? I have two. So I cancel the x squared, zero divided by two is zero. So the line y equals zero is my horizontal asymptote. All right, let's look at part B. So for g of x, we have 4x squared over 2x squared plus 1. So I changed it up a little bit. Why keep putting the equal sign there? So y will be equal to, again, I'm going to get an x squared. It doesn't have to be x squared. It could be x. It could be x cubed. It can be any values. But I'm just, I just pulled some. So how many x squareds do I have on the top? I have four. How many do I have in the denominator? I have two. The x squareds cancel. I have four divided by two is two. So y equals two is my horizontal asymptote. All right, let's look at the third one. So here we have h of x is equal to four x cubed over two x squared plus one. So my highest degree is x cubed. So I put x cubed on the bottom and on the top in the numerator and denominator. How many do I have in the numerator? I have four. How many do I have in the denominator? I have zero. Well, the x cubes cancel, but four divided by zero is undefined. So we have no horizontal asymptote. So that's all you have to do is match the degrees. To me, it's a little bit easier than remembering N and M, but you can do it any way that you know. I know some people know like bigger on top or bigger on bottom, you can use that as well. As long as you give me some reason, don't just give me the asymptote, you gotta show me some kind of work. And it is a Y equals, just like the asymptotes for the vertical are X equal. If you don't write Y equals, it's not quite right because it is a line. All right, let's go talk about slant asymptotes. So slant asymptotes, if the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator, is it in the form of y equals mx plus b? It will not occur if there is a horizontal asymptote because that means the top was either um, less than the denominator as far as the um, degree of the equation or they were equal to, and you got a horizontal asymptote. 
And that means that the degree of the numerator was not one more than the degree of the no denominator because that's the only time that we get no horizontal asymptote. So uh, to find them, we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator using synthetic division. So again, you're going to need to know how to do synthetic division. So it's going to be y is equal to the numerator divided by the denominator. This is what a slant asymptote looks like. It'll slant that way. You might have to graph one in homework. I don't usually ask you to graph one on the exams because it's, we just don't always have enough time to do all of these. And when you're finding it, it'll only be the part of the y equals mx plus b. It will not include the um, remainder. So if this was your answer, your sine asymptote would only be the x plus 1 part. It will not include the remainder. All right, so let's go do some slant asymptotes. So we're on example six. And part A. So f of x is equal to x squared plus 1 over x minus 1. Remember, it has to be in that x minus c format, which ours happens to be. So that means 1, the c, is going in the box, and we have to put in our coefficients. Well, we have an x squared, but there's no x term, so we have to zero fill and then put in the 1. Draw the arrow. So we get 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So this equation, if we were looking for the actual equation, we would drop down a degree, so it would be x plus 1 plus 2 over x minus 1. But remember, we only need that part. So y equals x plus 1 will be our slant asymptote. And it will, um, it is a line, again, and we don't have to worry about that part. All right, let's look at part B. So if we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5 all over x minus 3. Well, that 3 will go in the box, and then our coefficients are 1, negative 4, and negative 5. Bring down the 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 5 would be negative 8. But we only care about those first two because that's going to be a remainder. So y equals x minus 1 is the slant asymptote. So I don't care if you write the rest of it out. You can just go straight through there. You don't have to write that. All right, part C. You might in your homework. If we have f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 5x plus 7 divided by x minus 2. Well, 2 will go into our box. And then we have 2, negative 5, and 7. So bring down our 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 5 would be negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 7 minus 2 will be 5. So going down a degree, we'll have 2x minus 1. So y equals 2x minus 1 is our slant asymptote. All right, so let's talk about graphing because we need to graph some rational functions. This is one of your bigger problems that'll show up on your exam, so make sure you know how to do them. All right, so the strategy for graphing a rational function, we'll find the y-intercept, we'll find the x-intercepts, we're gonna find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Usually when we're graphing these, I'm not gonna ask you to graph a slant. And then we'll use all those things that we found, and then if we need some extra points, we'll use test points to fill it in. So we're going to pull up a fresh sheet because it's going to take a little bit of work. So example 7, f of x is 2x minus 1 over x minus 1, and we're going to graph this. So we're going to just follow. What do we know to graph? Well, we know we can use the x-intercepts. That's where y is equal to 0. 
So 0 equals 2x minus 1 over x minus 1. And we're going to multiply both sides by that denominator. We did this at the beginning of the section. So x minus 1. So that'll get us 0 is equal to 2x minus 1. Add the 1 over, divide by 2, and x will equal 1 half. So our x-intercept is going to be 1 half comma 0. Okay, part 2, let's find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. So y is equal to 2 times 0 minus 1 over 0 minus 1. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, so minus 1 over minus 1, well, that's going to get us positive 1. So we will have 0, 1 as our y-intercept. All right, part 3, let's find the vertical asymptote. I have to set my denominator equal to 0, so x will equal 1, that's it. And part four, let's find the vert or the horizontal asymptote. So that'll be y is equal to, they both have a degree of x, that's our highest degree. So x over x, how many x's do we have on the top? We have two. How many are on the bottom? We have one. X is canceled, two divided by one is two. So y equals two. Now because we have a horizontal asymptote, that tells me that we don't have a slant asymptote. That will be none, because if we have this, we cannot have that. So one of the ways to remember this, so for a vertical asymptote, think about the valley of the equation. It's the denominator. The valley of the equation will give you the vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote will be about the highest degree. So horizontal goes with highest, Vertical goes with the valley, and synthetic division goes with your slant asymptote. So slant and synthetic, higher with highest, or horizontal with highest, and vertical with the valley. That might help you do some kind of a mnemonic to remember how to do these. All right, so let's go start graphing this. So part six, we're going to start the graph. We're going to graph what we know and then find out what we don't know. We don't have really big numbers. I'm going to make a little bit of room, but I'm only going to go to like five. One, two, three, four, five. Because we have a few other things we need to do here than just graphing a couple of intercepts. All right, so the x-intercept is at one-half, so that's going to be right there. The y-intercept is at 1. Vertical asymptote is x equals 1. The asymptotes always graph with a dashed line. They're not a solid. So we're just going to dash it on down, draw a little arrows on it to show that it continues on. The horizontal is at y equal to 2. Put little arrows on it. And that's all we have to graph. So what that tells us is this part should follow around like this. Remember, these are sketches. If you notice also, I'm not bringing out a calculator. I'm just sketching what I have to find. And you have to find those using the algebra on the exam. All right. And then we know this part. But we don't have any points over here, so we need to do some test points. So we're just going to test to see where the graph lands. Does it land up here, or does it land down here? Usually, it will land up this way. So to do that, we're just going to do a t-chart. So I'm going to pick value for x. So here's my asymptote at 1, so I could pick 2. And then I'm also going to do a second one at 3. You only have to do one, but sometimes it's easier to graph it if you pick two points, because then you can draw them together like we did here. Otherwise, one will suffice, because you just need to know which way it's landing. And it's a sketch, not an exact. 
So when I plug in 2 to my function, I have 2 times 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 will get us 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. Well, that's 3. So that would be enough to know because at 2, I'm going to land at 3. So it'll be up here. So I know the graph is going to be here, but if you want a second point to make it easier and just to show you what if we don't always get a whole number. So if I plug in 3, I get 2 times 3 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. So that's 6 minus 1, which will be 5 over 2. So 5 halves, which we know is 2 and a half. And if not, you can put in your calculator. So two and a half, when we're at three, one, two, three, we're gonna be at two and a half. So one, two, and a half. So one, two, and a half right here. So that kind of gives me an idea and a little bit more to go on. But you could just find the one point. Okay? And that's all you gotta do. That's sketching the graph. And that's why you don't have to use a graphing calculator. All right, let's go do one that's a little bit more complicated. So this will be example eight. We have f of x is equal to 2x over x squared minus 4. So first of all, we're finding our x-intercept. That's where y is equal to 0. And if you notice, I always write what we're doing so I remember. If you write it every time, you won't forget what you're supposed to do. So we've got 0 is equal to 2x over x squared minus 4. Means we're going to multiply both sides by that denominator, x squared minus 4 and x squared minus 4. So that'll get us 0 is equal to 2x. If we divide by 2, we still get x is equal to 0. So 0 comma 0 is our x-intercept. Let's go do the y-intercept. So part two. So for our y-intercept, that's where x equals zero. So y is equal to two times zero over zero squared minus four gets us zero divided by negative four, which is still zero. So zero comma zero. Now when you get that, that means you're probably going to have to find more test points because you didn't get two points, you only ended up with one between the two parts. All right, part three, let's look for the vertical asymptote. So we're looking for the valley, x squared minus four equal to zero. Again, you can factor this with the difference of squares, or you can just do the square root property. So move the four over, take the square root of both sides, so x will equal plus or minus two. So that means we have x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2 for the vertical asymptotes. Okay, part 4, the horizontal asymptote. So y is equal to x squared is our highest degree. So x squared over x squared. How many do we have on the top? 0. How many are on the bottom? 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. So y equals 0. And that tells me that my slant asymptote will be none because I have a vertical, I mean a horizontal. All right, let's go start our graph. All right, um, we don't have any big numbers again. So I'm going to, let's go to about 5 again. So we're plotting at 0, 0, because that's what we know. We have x equals 2 as a vertical asymptote, and x equals negative 2 as another one. And we have y equals 0 as a slant asymptote. Well, we need more test points this time. We need one here to find out where it's going. So one, two, three. So we need one. We'll do x and y at negative three, at negative one, 
at one and at three. We're only going to do one point in each one. So we have two times negative three over negative three squared minus four. That'll get us the negative six. Negative three squared is nine. Nine minus four is five. So negative six fifths. At negative one, we have two times negative one over negative one squared minus four. So that'll get us negative two over one minus four is negative three, which will be two thirds. All right, let's look at one. So two times one over one squared minus four gets us two over one minus four is negative three. So negative two thirds. And then at three, so two times three over three squared minus four, that'll get us six over nine minus four is five. All right, so let's go graph those points. So at negative three, we're at negative six fifths. So that's like negative one and a little bit over. So we're right there. At negative one, we're at positive two thirds. And at one, we're at negative two thirds. And we're just sketching it. And then at three, we're a little over one. So that tells me here that the graph will be this way. Try and get it to go towards your asymptotes. I didn't do a great job there, but it's okay. It's just a sketch. More like that. And like that. And that's it. That's how you graph them. Again, no graphing calculator.